Um, yeah, totally. Praise nature, am I right, fellas? Alrighty. <clears throat> okay. We're back here. Now, the question is, do I try to go with the same thing, hopefully for a different outcome, or do I just start off completely different here? The first one did kind of get us in trouble with the police, so... Where do we obtain them? Sorry, could you tell me where to obtain them, please? The manager raises his head to look at me and Yila all over before he snorts softly. Play Elias. He retrieves a stack of papers from the counter, takes out a small solid car from the pile, and tosses it in my direction. I quickly step forward to catch it. Get out now while you have it. I will call the police immediately if you don't have any identification on the next time round. Ah, oh. I stuffed the card inside my pocket. How could, how come someone in a hotel without identification be arrested? I didn't ask the manager about it. Uh, but I turned to Yila instead. We lack something, and we can't stay here. And just, just making sure I can't really see them with all that hair right there. In that case, we should probably go. We can only leave the hotel sadly. At least we still got blood. And we end up on the deserted streets once again. I take out the card that the manager gave me from my pocket. You see, this is what's called a card. You would know if you were listening. Hila leans over and we study the card with the words name card printed on it. What is written on it? Okay, so we have a phone number to call. Do you have a phone? Probably not. We don't have phones. Yila reads out the words on the card. I think she'll know how to use this thing, since she's the clever one. As a result... Yep, yep, neither of us know what's going on. If you don't know, I certainly have no idea either. I know, right? Couldn't you can't can't you be more useful right now? <laughs> Certainly not me, because I already don't know anything. Nila steps back as if she's lost interest, turning all her attention away from the name card. What should we do now? Where shall we go? I mean, it's good to get input every now and then. Missy, didn't you say I'm your thrall? Isn't a servant supposed to listen to a master's bidding? <laughs> got you there, didn't I? Yila he's a deep sigh. Alright, well, back to wandering the lonely streets at night then. Understood. You really are a clever lady. You know what? I don't even know what I've been learning all these years. I mean, probably to cook. From Mr. Cook. God damn it, I just remembered him. <laughs> Never forget Mr. Cook. Mr. Cook. We can, god damn it. We continue walking single file and head along the street towards a set of lights in the distance. Ooh. Little cafeteria place. After wandering aimlessly, we arrive at a 24-hour restaurant offering pasta all day and stop to rest inside. Oh, god damn. Who the hell ordered a pineapple pizza? Eh. Eh. I'm still indifferent about pineapple on pizza. I mean, it's something, but like, uh, all dried out, man. Well. Also, lady, you're a little too close right now. You want to back it up? Do you serve any drinks here? Do you have any Harlem root juice? What were you expecting, man? Look at the menu. Do you think they got any Harlem root juice? Come on, use your brain. Ah, it can't be. 
don't people dr didn't don't people drink those in the past? They could relieve fatigue. People around my time loved to bring a flask of Hollum root juice with them to relieve their weariness whenever they needed to do anything physically demanding. Alright, coffee? Definitely hate. I could... No matter what I threw in it, no matter how I mix it, I could just never keep it down. One sip and I'm like... Oh. Coffee? I look at the listed price for coffee on the menu. It is simply daylight robbery. Never mind. I like to have a glass of water. $22. God damn, I'm still being robbed. She must be expecting me to pay in advance. The restaurants in this era are so calculating. Can't they allow patrons to finish their meal before settling their bill? I mean, some people, some places do. I take out the wallets and hand her three notes with the number 10 printed on them. I better begin an exact change, lady. A waitress prepares to leave, but Yila quickly stops her. What? Is there a problem? Is there something wrong, Yila? Oh, you're asking about the phone number. Alright. Yila covers the other words on the card and only shows the waitress that set of numbers. Yeah, look at that, see? I was right. Too bad Raylan isn't me. The waitress leans closer to look at the card and gives her answer. There's a phone outside? Hallelujah. <laughs> God, we look like a bunch of goddamn Neanderthals right now. <laughs> Yila raises my question for me. I mean, it's not that hard to explain, but I'm sure you're going to be baffled if someone comes up to you and be like, Hey, what do these numbers mean? Oh, there's a telephone number. What's a telephone? Who are you? <laughs> How do you not know what a telephone is? The waitress frowns in disapproval, and she automatically sizes Leela... Leela? <laughs> wrong name. Yila up. That look resembles a washerwoman from a city regarding a milkmaid from the countryside. Oh, oh what, you figure it out? Suddenly, she seems to have come to a realization and claps her hands. Um, yeah, totally. Praise nature, am I right, fellas? <laughs> no, yes, just, just agree with her, Yila. Oh, we're Amish. Interesting. Praise Amish, am I right? <laughs> we are definitely followers of the sect of nature. Ah, uh, yes, yes, we are. Just, just agree, just agree with the lady. I quickly speak for your Yila. While the waitress is still excited, since she can't afford to let others see through us at this juncture, since we can't afford, I quickly give Yila a wink. Oh, definitely, we are, we are definitely walkers, walking all around, walking everywhere, walking up walls at this point. <laughs> I should stop talking. Right, right. So please tell us about the telephone number and how to use that thing. Lovely, great. Thank you for that information. That's this. This is going to be very beneficial. I shall. I shall spread word about this new fangled invention called the telefono to the people of my. Sect. Sect, right? Is that what she called it? The sect of nature? Looking at the waitress while she answers her question, I can tell that she really enjoys helping others. Really? Uh, that means we can also find someone who is far away? Really cool. If we use that thing called a telephone or whatever, can we reach someone from the old continents? 
ことねええ私が生まれる前からできるわよ Oh shit we call it way back home Thank you We really appreciate it Oh we sure will All that talk of food Now I'm getting hungry The waitress smiles and nods at us before leaving I'm sorry, you were doing the same thing a while back. I think. I don't know. Maybe. Who knows? Shh! Can't you see I did that for both of us? If I dare what? What are you gonna do about it? She looks around before taking the opportunity to bare her fangs when no one is paying any attention at us. I won't dare. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> I won't. Don't frighten me, missy. That telephone sounds really amazing, though. I quickly change the subject while laughing nervously. What do you mean, just how many things have I not seen before? You are in the same situation I am. Or have you just been waking up periodically during your nap to, like, walk out and be like, Oh, yeah. Alright, so this has happened, this has happened, that has happened. But you haven't, because you don't know what a telephone was. You liar. Hypocrite. That seems to be a satisfactory answer for her. She didn't pursue the matter further, and she continues with the subject instead. <laughs> Yeah, science really knows how to make the long strides. Yes, and who would have guessed that a primitive man from 300 years ago and a vampire has entered a world three centuries later to commit all sorts of crimes? You know what, that is, that is pretty funny. In a world where a man and a vampire travel 300 years in the future, to end with one mission to go on the ultimate crime spree this is vampire crime <laughs> i don't know something oh, see she liked it yila chuckle softly i wonder if there are any changes in the way they prepare their food it would be nice if only mr cook is still around Ah, uh, he so is. Rest in peace, Cook! Yes, he's like a father to me. I regard him as my own father, because I don't know who are my natural parents. Oh wow, my man's an orphan. She turns her head to look out the window, and mutters. I'm sorry, is that... what does that mean? Is that supposed to be helpful? Philosophical? Falafel? Philosophical? What is that supposed to be? Hmm. Apparently I agree. After a short period of silence, both of us are looking out the window at the street outside. They're still preparing our meals. Let's try the telephone. Hopefully our food doesn't come out and they're like, Oh, well, they're not here. <laughs> I guess it's ours now. Thus, we enter the phone booth that the waitress pointed to us earlier. This small booth has a small mechanical machine hanging on one side, which I haven't seen before. Its exterior has numerous buttons with a number printed on each of them. Absolutely. We don't have 50 cents, do we? Yila points at the card in my hands. I nod and move aside to allow her to operate the device. Oh god, we don't know how to use a phone. Yila begins to look through the numbers on the card, presses each button on the machine once, and the device will produce the sound of a metallic object hitting something each time she pushes a button. Uh, I don't know, what are you asking me for? This is my first time using a phone. The phone becomes quiet again when she's done pressing every number. We look at each other and wait for quite a while, but we don't hear anyone speaking. You didn't give it money. Did you operate it wrongly? Well, well, absolutely, thank you. 
Hila chucks the card at my chest and moves aside in response. I study the telephone closely. It has something black next to the numbers. Maybe that is a crucial thing. What's this? Seems it can be retrieved. I take the black object. This thing has two heads and tiny holes on the top. Maybe this is the crucial thing to speak across long distances. Wait, what did I do? What did I push? Did I do something? I place one head against my ear, and the other head happens to reach my mouth. Oh, we're just talking about the actual phone. Hello? Hello? Hello there? Operator? But no sound is coming out. Nevertheless... It's so funny watching them get mad at a phone while knowing how exactly to operate said phone, but I can't tell them. Hila is getting impatient and begins to press the buttons at random. However, the phone still isn't responding. Is the thing out of order? Yep, truly... Truly troublesome this is. This has been... How about... We try asking that waitress one more time. Hila's eyes pop wide open upon hearing my suggestion. Why, yes I have. It is a skill that I learned while being on the road. The skill I recently acquired after I stole a lot of blood recently. You should know this, you were there. <laughs> Thanks to you. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll just be right here, I guess. Gila opens the phone booth's glass door and steps out indifferently. I place the black object back on the device and follow her back into the restaurant. Hey, lady. How does that thing out there work again? Anyway, that was what happened. <laughs> oh, shit, she's gonna show us? Oh my god, this lady is such a saint to all these people. The nurse, the, the waitress. I wouldn't have expected a waitress to help with jack shit besides giving us food. Wow, thank you very much. The waitress agrees to help us make a phone call after we described what happened. And we bring her to the phone booth. Yeah, we kind of forgot that coin bit. Ah, coin? I search through the wallet and find a coin at one counter, at one corner inside a compartment. Will this do? All right, into the machine it goes. I insert the coin into the into the opening. I can hear the clinking sound of metal. Uh, you mean the black object, of course. So this black thing is called a receiver. Okay. Boop, 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 boop. Yula checks the number on the card and presses each button carefully. Okay. Ooh, it's working! Thank you, thank you so much for your help, lady. This, this, this lady, oh. She deserves a reward. <laughs> the waitress nods and returns to the restaurants. The receiver produces a series of beeping noises, followed by a person's voice from the earpiece before long, and it is a man's voice. Hey, hello. Hey, the vacuum cleaner company. Oh. Ah. Heh. Hello? Yes. I heard you could help with identification matters. Yes. That's great. How do I go about it? Lady, I am on the phone right now. Give me a minute. I said give me a minute. Ah, don't butt in. Hmm? I have no choice but to place the receiver in a position where both of us can hear the voice over the earpiece. Nah, sorry. Please continue. We only work on driving licenses now. We can't do passports or social security cards for the time being. Uh, then we'd like to have driver licenses for two people. Fine. That'll be 500 for, for each person. 500? That'll be a thousand for two people. Those paper notes are worth so little. We'll need a thousand. 
I look at Yila and whisper the amount to her. After moving the receiver away, she furrows her brows. Isn't that a bit expensive? Did you give a slightly lower price? Hey buddy, we can't make it any lower. Lately the border has been very harsh in the clamp down on illegal immigrants. We're taking a risk by running this kind of business. We're not illegal immigrants. What are illegal immigrants? I'm not concerned about that. I only care about money. Pay me and everything will be fine. Hila quickly shakes her head. Uh, we'll think about it and call you again. Shoot yourself. I hang up the phone and shrug. It's simply daylight robbery. Yeah, I'm sure they're like long gone. I'm pretty sure they're like already dead <laughs> themselves. I gather they have all died a long time ago. Yeah, exactly. Well, maybe next time actually hide your secret vault. Hila sighs and steps out of the phone booth, leaving me all alone to stare at the back of a down and out vampire girl as she returns to the restaurant. Ah, finally. I am starving right now. Our dishes arrive shortly after we return to our seats in the restaurant. I will do my darndest. Thank you. The waitress nods and departs. I sniff the aromatic fried fish. The fish that is cooked in fragrant, sizzling hot oil smells so wonderful. And the fish looks so shiny, I can tell it will be very tender and delicious. In addition, the red tomato sauce, parsley, leaf, parsley leaves, and golden colored pasta strands complement each other well, enhancing the flavor and the pasta sweet and sour taste. I'm a bit curious at this pineapple pizza though. I'm surprised that it is really a pizza with pineapple scattered on top. What is this thing? Is it used to humiliate an actual pizza? Okay, we understand his opinion on pineapple on pizza. How should I put it? Things have really improved a lot since my time. At least they look good. Would you like to try some? Oh yeah, I completely forgot. She can't eat. This is all for me. Hila narrows her eyes. I'm a chef after all, and will need to know the dishes people eat in this era. Slowly. Do you do you care if I eat too fast or do you want to watch? I'm going to help myself then. I begin to eat in huge mouthfuls. I'm finally having a proper meal for the first time over these two days, and I can't help shedding tears over it. Lady, you have no idea how delicious this food is, and you know what? You never will. Oh. Mm. Ugh. Don't ask me questions when my mouth is full. Yila rests her chin on one hand and looks out the window. I wonder what she's thinking. I bring a slice of pizza into my mouth, shifting my gaze away from Yila. It just so happens that a black box hanging on the wall at one side of the restaurant has a picture of a person that seems to be moving. It can even speak. It is so surprising that I nearly choke on my pizza slice. <laughs> I quickly drink a mouthful of water to calm down. Eh, you know, prison changes a man. You gotta eat fast or else it's gone. Look, moving picture box! <laughs> no. Do you know how that thing can possibly contain a person inside? I point to that black box. She's just so nonchalant about everything. Everything is new and she's like, yeah, so. Hila just gives that thing a passing glance before she returns to look out the window. Hmm, right. I have to get used to it. I decide to look a little longer and get used to it. The person in that box seems to be talking about us right now. Oh shit, news report? 
Hila appears a bit shocked upon hearing it, and turns to look at the black box. This evening, at around 8.15, unidentified suspects broke into Acerix Art Pharmaceuticals Blood Bank at 277 Garden Street. The suspects injured three security personnel and stole blood from their depository worth around... Is that right? Yeah, we were, we were pretty fast about it. The three security personnel have been sent to a hospital for observation and they are in stable condition, but they claim they could not remember anything at that time, as if they had developed short-term memory loss. Investigators believe this could be the work of the local cult Order of Fresh Blood. The what? The local cult Order of Fresh Blood. The police would like to remind everyone to be careful when out at night, and avoid cults. This is today's breaking news. Next, we have a speech by President Hobbs for our military operations overseas. A fresh wave of airstrikes. Then the report on us ended. I shift my attention away from the box, which has a man with a blonde hair appear at the back. Oh. That guy's got a pretty high voice. You can even make people lose their memories when you suck their blood? Oh yeah, sure. I'm sure you jumping at their necks wasn't on purpose. It's so convenient. Oh, I see. You didn't suck my blood because you were afraid I would forget about you. Is that right? Oh, sure, sure. Says the blush on your face right now. I can see it. You think I can't? I can see everything. Hila turns away in a huff. Mm-hmm. I didn't know... I didn't know you're a lady who's afraid of being lonely. That's so cute. Alright. I mean, I was gonna eat it all anyway. Uh, don't. Don't waste all these good food. I'd hate to see them get ruined. I'll shut up. I'll shut up, please. Just don't touch the food. I swear. She glares at me. Looks like the police in this era ride in those metallic skinned vehicles and will arrive very quickly if anything happens. We need to be extra careful from now on and stay out of trouble. Says the lady who couldn't even operate a phone. I'm just worried that you may lose control of yourself. The waitress serves several glasses of water, which quenches my thirst after I finish everything on the table. It feels satisfying to have such things that I never had before. Hila suddenly asks a question. Uh, Mr. Cook, he was the greatest man I ever met, and the greatest man I ever will meet. Rest in peace, my brother. Uh... Why are you asking this question all of a sudden? Uh, he was an easygoing and strict man. His culinary skills were impressive, yet he would often quarrel with his customers. I asked and he said sure, why not? Actually, he was very nice. Although I had lived in his former small in this former small town when I was a child, I wasn't born here. I was born in the old continent, but I never saw my natural parents. I stayed in an orphanage from the time I could learn about things. Mr. Cook adopted me after that, so he became my father and brought me to this new continent. <laughs> Absolutely. Is that going to change your opinion of me at all? Hmm. That's because the old continent would often have wars for many years. Mr. Cook's wife and daughter had already died. Oh my god, Mr. Cook. He's faced such hardship. My natural parents probably met a similar fate as well. Later, they said the new continent on the other side of the ocean had a sanctuary of light filled with hope. So Mr. Cook brought me here. <laughs> Yeah, 
I mean, why not? It's, it's, it seems pretty good so far. Well, except for the fact that I got chased by a couple hooligans 300 years ago. Hmm. Mr. Cook heard that a person would go to the Sanctuary of Light after they died, so he thought his wife and daughter would be at the New Continent. Hence, he decided to cross the ocean and settle in a place closest to them. Ah, yes. Nothing truly is as good as it says in the New Continent, is it? Who could have foreseen that? At first, we thought of leading a peaceful, settled life. Yet the good times didn't last long, and a new war broke out not long afterwards. I shrug and smile bitterly. What about you? My story is very short. But I remember you come from a more distant place, right? Your story should be very long. What do you mean? I can't come out openly for more than a few days, so I will need to hide in the darkness for the rest of my life. That actually brings up a good question. Why was she asleep for 300 years? She said something about a curse? Was she dealing with some sort of sleep and beauty curse? At least you could dig an entire vault to store your treasures. God knows how many lifetimes I would need to accumulate that amount of wealth. Oh wow, you actually care for my well-being right now? I never would have expected this. Hmm, you should take a nap too. I stretch myself upon hearing her reminder. Indeed, fatigue will take over after a full meal. Sleep where? You want me to sleep here? In this place? Hila looks out the window, lost in thought again. Good night. Yep, I just... I just sleep right here. I glance at her, use both hands as a pillow, and slowly drift off to sleep after resting my head on the table. Oh shit, we were actually just legitimately allowed to sleep here all night. Ah, cool. <laughs> the next morning, we're awoken up by all that noise from the restaurant staff handling the furniture and eating utensils roughly. They just had no problem with me sleeping here. You know what? This place is fantastic. I love it. And we will continue this next time.